Hello and welcome to the Five Writers Five Minutes podcast in which five authors share their top writing tips. I'm Lee and Tanner. I'm Zanny Louise. I'm Tristan Banks. And I'm Deborah Abella. And I'm Sarah Armstrong. Today we are talking about research. Now I love research because it's not just looking things up in books or online. It can be talking to experts or trying something out yourself to make sure you get it right in a story. And getting things right is really important. Imagine that I've written a story set in the Middle Ages and someone's reading it and they think it's a great story, but then one of the characters in the story pulls on their underpants and the person (laughs) reading it says, hang on, people didn't wear (laughs) underpants in the Middle Ages. They hadn't been invented yet. Lee and Tanner doesn't know what she's talking about. I am never going to read one of her books again. Yeah, Mm. we don't want that to happen. That's why we do research. Zanny. What sort of research do you do? Well, I'm one of those bad people who doesn't do a lot of research. Well, particularly as I'm writing. And I think for me, like any interruption of flow just uh, breaks me out of the creativity because I have to hold the story in there as tight as possible to not lose those threads. But I do go back later and do some research. So, for example, in Queenie and Seven Moves, the first move she goes to is a nursing home. And so my uh, aunt, she's worked for many years in aged care homes. So I sent her an email. I sent her the chapters. I said, how credible are these chapters? What am I missing? And she picked up some great things. Like, for example, it was set during the COVID era. And she said, well, I don't think they would sing inside. I think they have to go outside to sing. Oh, thank you so much. And there were lots of little details in there. Just gave me the reassurance that, well, Hopefully this is, you know, more or less credible. And I do write realism. So in that sense, it has to be accurate. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm totally with you on doing the research after the first draft. That's yeah. what I do too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kristen, what about you? Um, I'm still reeling from the fact that people didn't wear underpants in the middle <laughs> age. I, think, I, that was, I mean, that's incredible. I'm definitely putting that in my next book. Um, but I research wise, I for for Scartown, I got to do lots of research on drowned towns, um, which I find fascinating, you know, like abandoned malls or abandoned theme parks. I think Um, humans are just attracted to this idea of, you know, these towns that reemerge from lakes when, you know, then they've been buried down there at some point and the kind of secrets around that as well. So whenever I would go near a lake, I would be taking photos of it. And uh, so I guess that that's research. Also, um, one of my favorite movies ever, Stand By Me, uh, was an influence on this book and uh, the body, which it was based on. So I got to reread the body and I got to watch Stand By Me during work hours, which was um, which I I justified as as research. (laughs) And to me, watching movies during work hour and travel are the the two biggest treats that you can pass off as research. Yeah, um, yeah, that's some some of the things that I do. Yeah, yeah. taking photos, I I do that myself. Yeah, taking photos is great. Deb, yeah. what were you going to say? Yeah, look, it's interesting because I'm almost going to say probably the opposite of um like of you and and Zanny um because I do a lot of my research at the beginning. So for example, mm-hmm. when I wrote the book Grimsden, which is you know a bunch of kids trying to survive in a flooded city with sea monsters and flying machines, I felt like I had to know more about the mechanics of how you would survive in a flooded Mm. city before I could then literally dive in. Yeah, Uh that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Actually doing the research gave me plot point ideas. Uh So I would discover like a new thing about a flying machine and I think, oh, that's great. That means he's going to break in and steal that thing and that will be how he builds that invention. Um, And then other things too, uh, like for example, in the Spelling Bee series, one of the characters, Boo, has really bad asthma so i needed to talk to a respiratory nurse to say you know because i don't have asthma but i knew i wanted you know india's younger brother to have it so um i needed to know exactly what do we do now not what we did in the 80s or you know i needed to know Mm. what it what what do kids with asthma need to have in their in their pack or on their person to kind of deal with a flare up so um so i yeah, often do that research yeah before i even start so because i feel like then i know what i'm doing yeah and the downside of not doing it before is that you sort of try to limp along yeah. with the minimum of information that you have but you get yeah. to a certain point and you think i cannot keep going with this because that's I not going to work yeah. Yeah. so yeah good yeah. good point or if you I make lots if you, of gaps 
I need yeah. lots of facts in the story, you know, and I put research here. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Sarah, how about you? Well, you'd think as a sort of former journalist, I'd be really good on research and getting things right early on. But uh, I'm a bit like Zanny and Tristan. I like to write it first and do a bit of guesswork and then do some research and then do a bit more writing. And with Big Magic, you know, I had to, you know, do lots of circus research. But I just sort of wrote what I thought first from my experiences of going mm-hmm. to circus. And then I went to circuses, mm-hmm. which is pretty great way to do research yeah. right yeah, yeah. and you know, watch jugglers and watched circus performers with a whole new eye it was really mm-hmm. fantastic uh, you know went to see Cirque du Soleil and all these yeah. incredible circuses and uh, the other thing I really love to do is get what I call my consultants so I have a friend who's a circus performer and I would send her bits and say does this ring true and she'd say things like no, you never wear green in a circus. It's bad luck, <laughs> that sort of thing. So I have like consultants, whether they be magic consultants or yeah. circus consultants or Welsh consult- consultants because all the spells are in Welsh. Mm-hmm. So I had a Welsh translator. Oh, yes. I love making those contacts with people to talk about it with them first and then I have them read bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah. good. Mm. I love doing that. That's that's what I do, Sarah. I think one of the best parts of, of research is talking to experts. I've talked to a retired submarine captain. I've talked to people who've been <laughs> to Antarctica. I've talked to people who dress up as medieval knights and have sword fights. And, and don't no wear just, underwear. I, no don't one know. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if they were wearing <laughs> underwear or not. Mm. Um, that is so interesting. But for me, the best part of the research is going out and doing stuff myself. Yeah. So uh, when I was writing Icebreaker, I found I, I went all over an icebreaker ship and and I wanted I made notes about what do my feet sound like on the metal stairs oh. and, and what does the water sound like oh. against the hull and where nice. might someone hide? And if I'm going to be writing a story about someone crawling through long grass, I will cr- go out and I will crawl through long grass That's to wonderful. see what it feels like, you know, and, and what can I see when I'm right down there in amongst the grass and what oh. does it feel like? Um, That's why there's so much detail in your writing, Leanne. Yeah, yes. I, so I, much detail. It's a really in nice part of it. Yeah. Years ago, I wrote a story about a wombat, and it was a really bad story, so it was nearly never published. But part of my research for that was I'd read that wombats like to go out and scratch their backsides against a tree. So I went out to the nearest <laughs> national park, and I went off the off the off the path, and I got down on my hands and knees, and I was scratching my backside <laughs> against a tree. And these bushwalkers came past. <laughs> and I pretended that I had lost my contact lens. Oh, oh good cover. Research. <laughs> research can be really good fun. And yes, we all uh, recommend it. Definitely. Um, go out and do some research. Have fun with it. Find some experts. Try stuff out yourself. And don't forget that this is both a podcast and a YouTube thingy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.